By 20 May, the second phase of the Red Spring Offensive has been thrown back along the entire front, with the last gap closed on the Eastern Front near Hang Yi by 24 May. The UN counterattack is launched immediately, driving the communists in full retreat. By the beginning of June, the pursuit, spearheaded by armored columns, has carried the Allies across the 38th parallel into North Korea, where the enemy braces and halts their retreat, forming a defense triangle anchored at Chorwon, Kumwa, and Pyongyang. By 15 June, UN forces crack the heavy red defenses in their so-called Iron Triangle, taking Kumwa and Chorwon and advancing north to Pyongyang. During the week 13 to 20 June, the communist air power becomes more aggressive, but suffers heavy losses to the UN air arm. During this period, the line undergoes minor changes as the ground phase subsides to patrol action and sporadic encounters. Allied units push northward along the entire front as the tide of battle changes decisively in Korea. A tank infantry force takes up the pursuit of the exhausted Reds who bogged down in the second stage of their unsuccessful spring drive. The enemy, who has suffered huge losses in men and materiel, is retreating toward North Korean mountain strongholds. Withdrawing along a front of more than 100 miles, Red units find themselves under constant attack from the well-organized UN troops. Enemy lines of supply and communication are placed under continuous aerial and artillery bombardment. Here, the infantrymen prepare to blast the Reds from still another hilltop with coordinated fire and high explosive shells. Close support of the infantrymen smash an enemy held hill position. Muddy roads hamper the UN ground forces as they continue their offensive. The rapidity of the UN advance has cut off many large red units fleeing the attack from the south. Artillery crews must service their guns, bad weather or not. This unit, temporarily isolated from its supplies by a washed out bridge, waits patiently while ammo is in the process of being delivered to its frontline position.
an airlift delivery of the artillery ammo has been decided on, and a break in the weather allows this resupply by air. Once considered an emergency measure, this method is now a routine logistical operation. The cargo planes, which have been dubbed by the soldiers as flying A-frames, come over in the drop zone, releasing more and more of the vitally needed ammunition. The delays caused by the strong torrential rains allow a great number of the retreating communist forces to escape north. But with their ammunition stores being constantly replenished, regardless of poor weather, UN artillery continues its heavy pounding of the enemy. The UN offensive is slowed temporarily, but continues moving into North Korea. Artillery battery prepares for a fire mission to aid UN forces in their counterattack. The men assemble a newly arrived shipment of 155 millimeter howitzer shells for their powerful weapon. Each shell weighs 97 pounds. After stacking the shells, fuses are screwed on. The breech block is carefully cleaned and oiled during the lull between fire missions. This outfit has fired over 130,000 rounds in support of infantry expending over 6,240 tons of shells. Here, the artillerymen adjust the equilibrator springs to balance the muzzle. Acting as a team, the men move swiftly to load the pieces. Last second fire adjustments are completed and the big guns go into action. As Allied units move northward, strong emplaced positions are constructed to fend off any red counterattacks. The men await the order to press on and maintain contact with the retreating enemy units. The UN forces swiftly adapt themselves to the hilly Korean terrain. Infantrymen conceal themselves with automatic weapons in the deeply emplaced bunkers. A 75 millimeter recoilless rifle is put to a thorough cleaning. Lieutenant General Frank Milburn visits front areas, getting a first hand view of the pursuit of the fleeing Reds. The men jump off, continuing their part of the Allied counterattack. UN infantrymen, well armed and well supplied, are capturing large hauls of enemy prisoners for the first time in the Korean War. During this period, enemy prisoners number 10,000, more than three times as many as have surrendered since Red China's intervention. The enemy gives up rapidly the terrain it cost him so much to capture. The advance continues as mine detector teams search for mines scattered in the roads and paths by the somewhat disorganized foe. Out of curiosity, one soldier glances at a red surrender pamphlet purporting to contain pleas of captured UN soldiers. From an observation post, supporting fire is directed against red strong points. 
mortars are set up and zeroed in. The troops strike another heavy blow against the retreating enemy. ground liaison team directs an F-51 strike as the Allies continue to move forward. Talking directly to the pilots, the ground unit helps the planes pinpoint the target. rises from the burning target as the Air Force helps smash the Reds in North Korea. As the UN attack continues, Allied troops open fire with machine guns on an enemy-held area. Fire is directed against a small house that harbors the enemy. Communist prisoners are taken as the troops move down into the valley. A wounded red soldier is captured. The troops push on against the reds who hold another hill beyond the valley. A powerful hail of steel is thrown into the enemy hill positions by quadruple mounted 50 caliber machine guns. With the main communist force routed from the hill, the soldiers advance cautiously into the area to mop up possible stragglers. The men pause in their pursuit to have hot chow brought up to them in Marmite cans. The attack continues as the troops drive the last of the Red Force out of the area. A Navy rocket ship loads ammunition for a night mission against Wonsan, North Korea. The purpose of the mission is to impede the southward movement of enemy troops along the coastal roads and blast red supply dumps and communication centers. The Navy adds its help to the UN's counterattack as the bombardment begins. 